and now for something completely different. This is my review of the 1957 Italian version of Jane Eyre. I decided to do this at this point because since I just watched 83 and all of those lines are very close to the book, if not verbatim, so I thought that having all those things fresh in my mind would help me understand what people were saying because this version doesn't have any subtitles and I don't speak Italian, so I thought that I'd be able to figure it out based on the natural progression of events and all that. But it turns out I was wrong. <laughs> I spent most of my time being absolutely confused, relying solely on body language and kind of where we were in the plot because they added a lot of dialogue, they added characters, they took things and put them out of order and I was just like, well, I don't know what's happening. Okay, we'll just do it your way. All of the clips and photos from this movie are captured from Julieta Janito's upload at her channel, and I have provided a link to those in the description below. If you speak Italian, then you'll probably really get more out of it than I did. Uh, but here's what I thought about it. I spent the whole, like, first half hour thinking that I was watching it out of order because it starts with the horse scene. Uh, my first instinct is to look at Jane and say, nope, she's pretty. But, um, that's how they do these things many times. I kept on trying to figure out who he reminded me of. He's, he's like a cross between, I thought, he's got some Henry Fonda in there, I saw some Spencer Tracy, and I also saw this guy who was in the uh, musical version of Hunchback of Notre Dame. I think that the mm, palpable attraction between the two really helped me enjoy the movie without understanding 95% um, of the dialogue. So they do all this stuff and then all of a sudden we go back to Gateshead in a flashback and this flashback is most of the first hour of the movie. Um, it really confused me because um, everyone's an adult. There are no children actors. There's this guy. By episode 3 I figured out that they were saying Jake Lloyd and I was like, oh it's Jake Lloyd. Who is that? Apparently, Jake Lloyd is Jane Eyre's closest friend from childhood. And he's a nice, good-looking young man. Seems pretty stable. Very caring. Uh, very into protecting her. Kind of messes things up to have this nice guy because she's not friendless and alone and all that. If he is not her cousin, as I had originally supposed, and he's in love with her, as I assume. Why did she friend zone him? Why can't they be a thing? He's definitely not the Sinjin type. There is no Sinjin character in this. I would just like to know, what what are the objections to him? One of the good things about this version, uh, they put in a lot of gothic stuff. There's a shot of Grace Poole staggering drunk up the stairs to the tower, and it looks like it's a fixed camera in a mental asylum. The music for this film, the opening credits music, totally gave me the heebie-jeebies, and I wasn't sure if I liked it or not by the end, because you get to hear something like that over and over and over again, you're either gonna be like, I hate it, make it stop, or you're gonna be like, actually, it's kind of nice, I'm getting used to it. Ooh, it was weird. One of the not-so-good things about this version is that it could have been half as long. Uh, for example, there's this awkward scene where Adele has put on the dress that Rochester gave her, and she asks Jane to play the piano, and there's like all of the servants crowded into this little room, and Adele dances, and it goes on and on and on and on until finally Rochester freaks out. For another example, uh, the fire scene. Fire in the bedroom. It's like, we have to set the scene. Thunderstorm. Person creeping up the stairs. Here's Jane in bed. Here's Rochester in bed. Mrs. Fairfax in bed. Here's these other two people that you don't know in bed. Here's Adele in bed. And back to Jane. Back to Rochester. Back to Jane again. Oh, she wakes up and she's like, oh, what's going on? This whole sequence took, I don't know, eight minutes when it should have just taken one. And they kept on going back to Gateshead. I don't know why, because that's something that none of the versions 
that I've seen ever have thought that it was necessary to do. I'm sure that it being five hours long puts some people off, and it's like, hey, you know, if you just edit it. Maybe if someone took it and they did what some people do to the Star Wars prequels, which is cut out all the stuff that nobody likes and squash it together to make one pretty good movie, uh, maybe someone should do that to this Jane Eyre. And also add English subtitles for people like me who don't know Italian. Anyway, they do a bunch of things in this version that are kind of, uh, random or wrong. Um, like, Jane shows up at the party and I like that Rochester is acting like he's complimenting Blanche, but really he's talking about Jane. But then he introduces her to everybody and it's like, what? That's really awkward. Uh, speaking of awkward, the Mason thing. Mason, who looks kind of like Christopher Lee, uh, he, you know, gets attacked, um, by Bertha. Not that we see it at all. And so Jane wakes up and then she's kind of pacing around her room. And then there's a knock on the door and Rochester comes in, half carrying Mason, and he throws Mason down on the bed. My goodness, that's rather presumptuous of him, isn't it? How did he know that Jane was awake? How did he know that, like, she'd be okay with him just throwing this pers- this injured person, man, down on her bed? <laughs> Blanche was a total pill, uh, as usual, but she, um, she definitely seemed to know that Jane and Rochester had a thing. Like, there's this whole, I'm watching you watch her watch me watch you watch around and around and around and around. Everybody just seemed to wear their hearts on their sleeves. It seemed like all the servants knew that Jane was in love with him and that Rochester was in love with her. Rochester would freak out about something. And Jane was also the most emotional Jane ever. Maybe it's, maybe it's an Italian thing. I'm not gonna. And then all of a sudden, ethnic dancers. All of a sudden, there were actual gypsies, and they did a whole performance thing, and it was, it was cool. The violin music was really nice. Uh, another scene. I don't know how they got there, but Rochester and Jane are out in the garden, and it couldn't be more obvious how they feel about each other. And so I was just like, ah, oh, my goodness, kiss already. But then Jake comes, and. He's announced, and she's all like, oh, Jake! And Rochester's like, wait a minute, you, you told me that you didn't have any family, and that you were all alone in the world, who is this? And you can tell he's getting kind of, And then Jake comes in, and he's all like, Jane! And she's like, Jake! Old friend, really! And then she runs into his arms, and he kisses her, and Rochester's just like, right, okay. And then Jake goes out, and... I think it's the how do I say goodbye dialogue. <laughs> They're talking and like Rochester's sweating it. profusely and they must have like spritzed him to you death. I'm, I have no idea what he's saying but it just seemed really romantic and they start playing Tchaikovsky's None But The Lonely Heart in the background. <laughs> Yeah, the tension is just killing me and then it ends in this melodramatic tableau. Uh, Jane has gone out and Blanche comes in onto the terrace or garden or whatever and she stands behind him and he's got his back to the door and um, you can just tell when Jane comes to the door she's just totally devastated and you're like and Blanche is just this evil crow hanging on his shoulder and then he stands up and looks at the door too late and you're like oh man none of that was in the book but uh it was interesting I don't know I just I felt like I was watching a soap opera or something it was very exciting when her aunt is dead and she comes back it's set up kind of like a mirror image to the way it was when she left it's all very sweeping and romantic and like they don't have to say anything it's all not canon at all
bentornataci. Adele. Mom always wants me to mention Adele. Uh, Adele was cute. If she was speaking French, I didn't notice. <laughs> um, she's very naughty. She wanted to go play hide-and-seek with Jane, and she went up to the tower. When she's being prepared for the wedding, uh, I think she says to Leah or Sophie, I don't know what I'm going to call Mademoiselle Jane because... I would like to call her Mama, but Mr. Rochester doesn't let me call him Papa, so I don't know what to do. It made me feel sorry for Adele at a point where I don't usually feel sorry for Adele. The, the wedding goes on and like Grace Poole is running around, she looks crazy. Apparently Rochester's name is Edward Stanley Rochester, no joke. Edward Stanley Rochester. And as far as the whole persuasion scene, I feel like if I knew what they were saying, then I would have found the scene very well acted. Um, but as it was, I can't really say that for sure because I don't know what they were saying and their emotions might not have fit the dialogue whatsoever. Rochester is blinded. Well, I guess he's blinded. It's kind of like a temporary blindness. And he's got these blinders on. When Jane comes back to him, Rochester's like, Oh, don't keep keep her from me for a minute. I don't want her to know what happened to me. So they go and they detain Jane, I guess. And he's rearranging stuff on a table. And he's desperately trying to convince Jane that he's fine and that he can see her. But it's very obvious and most obvious when she gets up and walks around and he doesn't know and he's addressing her empty chair and oh, it was just so pathetic it's good to see something different because maybe i get used to the same old same old it was refreshing to see a different take on it and i'm totally going against everything i ever say about like oh i want things to be faithful the more faithful the better and here i am praising this thing that like took the story and they kind of did whatever they wanted with it. It brought out different feelings and different reactions and it took me by surprise in different places and I really enjoyed that. I'd say I was pleasantly surprised with this. It, I spent a good hour, hour and a half not liking it, but once I got into the groove, um, it was, it was actually pretty enjoyable. Um, it also helped that I had a heavy finger on the right key so that when the camera was taking too long or someone was going too slowly down a hall, I could just bip, 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 and skip three seconds forward at a time. And I admit there were large chunks at Gates Head that I skipped, but um, that's kind of the way to do it. But uh, if you speak Italian, or even if you don't, and you're just a diehard Jane Eyre fan, I check it out because it was interesting and you'll figure out where you need to skip and where you shouldn't um yeah thanks for watching goodbye